the west coast of Oahu. Long considered one of the toughest and most difficult areas in the Hawaiian Islands. Nanakuli, Maili, Waianae. A place where drugs, homelessness, and poverty have devastated families and kept the community in bondage for years. It's in this place of crisis that an amazing transformation has begun to take place. It's a plan birthed through the Holy Spirit, founded on the promises of God and built on a history of prayer and service. Father, we come here today. It's Saturday morning before dawn as this group of men gathers at the gateway to the leeward coast to call on God to heal the land. Many churches, Christian organizations, and prayer warriors have been travailing for years over these grounds. Now, a small group of churches and pastors have joined together to diligently pray and work to see transformation in all aspects of their community. The United in Prayer movement became a catalyst to bring the pastors together. We made a commitment, uh, the pastors here, to, to get together and, and to start praying uh, and planning on uh, United in Prayer at Nanakuli High School. And the theme in that year was Light Up Hawaii. And so we tweaked it around and we, we made it into Light Up Nanakuli. Uh, the Lord gave us a scripture, uh, Isaiah 60, I believe. It's uh, Arise on Nanakuli. Let your light shine for all the, the nations to see because of the glory of the Lord is shining upon you. That scripture is so appropriate for uh, our community, Nanakuli. Nanakuli, which means to look down at the knees, a picture of a hopelessness. And what we were bringing was uh, God's word and God's love and God's light, meaning bringing hope to a people who were looking down. We could teach them to look up. United in Prayer was a turning point for one administrator who had given up hope on changing the school. I just felt the strength of God there and, and the need to, to have him with us all the time just to reach the kids. There's such a prevailing sense of hopelessness in our community. But if we show them the way, and it's only through prayers, if we show them the way that they can better their lives so that the kids can feel better about themselves, then we can move on. One of the cool things about Uniting Prayer is uh, it's all about God and our part in His creation. And in the midst of a broken and a fallen world, in the midst of a, a community or a society impregnated with the spirit of hopelessness, God's Word says that He can hear our prayers in heaven and He can heal the land. The reaction to the first event was so positive that within a matter of months, a second event was held at Nanakuli Elementary. After the first United in Prayer event on December 8, 2004, we had the honor and the privilege of going to Nanakuli Elementary School. And we got to go and pray for the administration there at the elementary school. We got to go to pray for every classroom. We got to pray for every teacher and every student and every family. You know, there can be no transformation without sustained prayer. One of the things that we made a commitment to do was that this wasn't going to just be a one-time event, but we made a commitment that this would be an ongoing uh, commitment that we would be making. We were in it for the long term. Our concern has been, as, as pastors and as leaders of the churches, that this not just be a series of events or programs, but that this become a lifestyle yeah. of our people. You are the God of transformation. Yes. Y you began with us, Lord. Before it can be a lifestyle for the members of the church, it has to be a lifestyle for the pastors. As they've gathered in varying numbers over the years, there's been a bond of fellowship, trust, and honesty with each other that has laid the foundation for transformation. 
praying together with the pastors every week uh, is like bread and water to me because it's an encouragement. Um, Because there are weeks when I get discouraged, when I'm going through things, and I can share that with them, and they'll pray for me, and and I pray for them. And uh, we do share ideas, and we share resources. It's not just prayer, although that's been the focus, and that's been the reason to get together. But it gives us opportunity then to share in other ways as well, to sharpen one another and, and to encourage one another. We're so blessed to be able to build a relationship with each other. And in building a relationship with one another, the rest of our uh, members in our local church, they begin to catch the same spirit, that if the leaders are united together, then the members of the local church can labor together, walk together, and laugh together. We call ourselves the Church of Nanakuli, and uh, that's who we are. We're all different branches of the same church, of the same kingdom. This whole movement, what we're doing is is based on prayer evangelism. And prayer evangelism is written in Itzavosu's book called Prayer Evangelism. It's written in his book, My City, God City. But not only that, it's written in the Bible. It's Luke chapter 10. It's Jesus told the 70. Basic principles of prayer evangelism. One, go out as lamb among wolves and you bless them. You bless them, you fellowship with them, and then you meet their felt needs. And then the last thing is after God does the miracle by meeting their felt needs, then you proclaim that the kingdom of God is here. The Nanakuli pastors have adapted the principles of prayer evangelism to change the spiritual climate over a community. First, join the community. Join the system and speak peace to the lost. Blessing opens the door to unbiased fellowship. Number two, embrace the community. Fellowship with them. Fellowship establishes a level of trust allowing neighbors to share their felt needs. Number three, improve the community. Take care of their felt needs. Prayer addresses these felt needs. And fourth, bring the kingdom of God to the community. Proclaim the good news. When we intercede for neighbors, God comes near to them in a tangible way. As we go out there to do prayer evangelism, we're not just going anywhere all over the community. There's a strategic plan that we use, and that's in Ed Savoso's book called um, That None Should Perish. And that strategic principle to take a a city is one, to establish the perimeter. It's so important that we need to establish a beachhead in our community, whether it's the business, schools, the parks, we need to establish a beachhead. Once we establish the perimeter there, we need to secure the perimeter. Satan has infiltrated the perimeter through sin, through anger, bitterness, or whatever it is, but we need to repent and we need to secure the perimeter. The third thing we need to do is we need to expand the perimeter. And we expand the perimeter by bringing more people in, more like-minded people that want to see the community transform. The fourth thing we need to do is we need to infiltrate Satan's perimeter. Satan had established a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of of hopelessness all over our community. And we need to infiltrate those areas, whether it's the schools, the business, the government. We send in our special ops team to to do um, surveillance, to find out what the needs are, to get intelligence, what tools, what what equipment, what types of resources we need to do. And then the fifth thing we do is we storm the gates of hell. We attack the kingdom of darkness. And we're doing that by sending our troops out there to, to take possession of the land. It's not enough to pray, but God's people got to take possession. Until we take possession, we're not doing anything. And then the, the last thing is the sixth thing is that, that we do it all over again. That we establish a beachhead right there in the perimeter that we attack. And we do it again and again and again and again. The Nanakuli churches are doing a number of activities that you would consider prayer evangelism. Their most effective tool and primary focus is love, or what we know as aloha. Aloha for God and aloha for people. God's heart for the people and the place is nothing more than loving them unconditionally. To love them with a love that comes from God, a love that looks at them and to see how God sees them, a love that says there's hope for you. God has a plan and a purpose uh, for you. Our Lord's Spirit is something that will bring family together, bring community together, helping the single family, helping the homeless, helping anybody get in trouble. The goal is to take God's aloha into all areas of our community, and the Nanakuli pastors have identified six gates or areas of influence to focus on. Education, business, 
government, churches, community, and families. One of the greatest crisis areas in Nanakui that touches all of the gates are the homeless. The different churches have pooled their resources to make a difference in a number of areas. Pele is known as the Ambassador of Aloha at nearby Ko'olina Resort and is responsible for one of the most appreciated and effective outreaches, washing clothes for the homeless. Before, um, we were at Cal Beach and we were washing by hand. It was difficult because you had to squeeze them and keep rinsing, you know, to get the soap out and stuff. Right now it's easy, perfect. You're washing the clothes, they know you see their dirty clothes, they see their where they've been at, but it really build a relationship. I thank God for, you know, when he gave me that idea, you know, and it's open to any other churches, to anybody. It's not my idea, it's God. Each month, the churches come together for a day to distribute food to the needy. We're asking God to just bring a change into this whole community, that's what we're about. When you look at the sign, it says CFJ Community for Jesus, okay? It's not about one church, but it's God's church all coming together to meet the needs of the community. Not only do they provide food, they have a free used clothing giveaway and an area for the children to be loved on while their families are being taken care of. Another outreach ministers to the homeless at Nanakuli Beach Park by feeding them one Saturday each month. They're also working with the children who are living on the beach. Besides feeding them and loving on them, they are imparting important spiritual truths to hungry souls. This is what we do every Tuesday night. How can you not want to be out here? There's any doubt that they're successful. Look at the love and listen to what they've learned. About God. Everyone who competes in the game goes to strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown. Would you acknowledge that as of this moment you are giving yourself entirely to God? If so, say, yes, I do. A number of business people from Nanakuli were empowered by the Transformation Hawaii Conference in 2005 when they were commissioned and released as marketplace ministers. One of the most dramatic and successful stories to come out of the conference is the story of Valley Maid Ukuleles. Deborah and Jerome Warner brought their ukulele making company from the back of Waianae Valley to what was considered the ghetto of Nanakuli. The result has been nothing short of total transformation of the area. One of the things that Ed was sharing was um, on Ninety Four Business, it was taking um, the marketplace and having ministers in the marketplace and I say, who's the ministers? And he kind of break it down and he said, you are the ministers. It's you who work in that, in that marketplace who, who will be ministering to the people in the marketplace. And I said, wow, so I can do that. He said, yeah, because it's anointed for business. God knew that we had to move out of the valley. He knew that it was our time to come out here in this place. Even though when we first came, it was really terrible. But when we started building the plants and putting the rocks, people said that they never did. This never place never did real. look like the way it is. We had brought life back into Nanakuli in this area. And this is all happening within a year's time. Jeez. And we look at each other and, and we know, you know, when people walk in, you guys are doing awesome. I said, it's all God. Not only have they brought transformation to the area, they are touching hundreds of lives each week through the business and by providing ukulele lessons to people from the west side. Jerome always wanted to do that. Not only make the ukulele, but you know, teach somebody how to play the ukulele. From when we opened to now, um, it's just been so awesome. The kids don't want to go home. The parents want to stay. For one grandmother, it's an answer to prayer. Out here in Nanakuli, we don't have activities for the children. So to keep them out of trouble, when I met Debbie and Jerome, it was so such a blessing. And I wish there was more people out there that can share the blessings like Debbie and Jerome 
for the children. Well, my class has just begun from five students to, to today. We, we reach our goal almost close to 50 students right now. The kids are being uh, good role models to their parents when they leave this place. Um, they, they're beginning to change their ways where they came in rotten. They we send them home. They, they, the parents are wondering, what you guys doing down there? Mm -hmm. We say, all we're doing is praying before we start and praying after we, we pow. Mm -hmm. And um, the kids finding that really comforting for them. God has done miracle after miracle in the Warner's lives. As they've been faithful to give God the glory, he's given them a second office next door and is launching a second business, the Koa Spoon. Being a marketplace minister, it's like a, an awesome thing. I cannot go wrong by making the products that I make and sharing them with people out there all over the world and all over our town, 96792. And if this brother can do it, so can you. Recently, Jerome and Deborah were asked to help pray for another business that heard their testimony and wanted to see transformation in their lives. It was a powerful time of repentance, blessing, and healing. In August of 2006, Jerome was invited to the high and intermediate school to share his story of transformation with the entire student body. Jerome returning to his alma mater brings the movement full circle as transformation began at Nanakuli High. As in the rest of Hawaii, the high school is the heart of the community and the key to the transformation of not only Nanakuli, but all of Hawaii. If this local boy can do, so can you! Love you! Hawks all away, baby! Woo! In April of 2006, believers from throughout the coast and from both political parties joined together to prayer walk the valley and ask God to heal the land. They committed their lives to each other and God by signing a declaration led by Lieutenant Governor Duke Iona. The prayer walk that we had in April was a tremendous blessing. It brought the local body of Christ here in our community, Nanakuli, together. And instead of just one foot stepping upon the ground and claiming it for Jesus, it was the body of Christ declaring and proclaiming that Nanakuli, my Nanakuli, was God's Nanakuli. God is doing miracles on the Waianae Coast as transformation and true unity begin to take place. In February of 2006, as an indication of God's miraculous power and how much He desires unity within His people, God performed a verifiable miracle in the lives of Pastor Victor Kila and his wife Angela. Their experience is a metaphor for what God wants to do on the west coast of Oahu and all of Hawaii. When the doctor called my wife at work and told her that with all the test results and the monitoring and that she had a miscarriage and oh, that was a heavy burden. At the time that this information was coming, I was involved in a ministry of bringing two groups of pastors together. And this news of my wife losing our child was very devastating to us. And we prayed that God, if you can do transformation on a bigger scale, like see a community transform. We know that you can change this situation for us. You can transform this bad news into something good. As Angela prepared to have the baby removed, Victor went to the pastor's meeting as a peacemaker to pray and plan to bring the two groups of pastors together. As they petitioned God to do a miracle, he would answer as only God can. And at the end, the pastor said, Kaukila, can we pray for you? And I said yes, and I shared with them that I had an appointment today to have my wife go in, and I said, um, we learned that we had a miscarriage and the doctor wants to conduct a DNC. And the pastors came in agreement and they prayed, prayed. Our intercessors at our home were praying. Mm -hmm. The pastors in the coalition were in prayer. Well, then we went 
She said, so what we'll do? And she said, we're just gonna go in and do the procedure. And I said to her, are you gonna do another ultrasound? And she said, well, no, because everything is showing that your, the baby should be, have come out already. But if you want to, I'll go and do the ultrasound. I said, yes, please. This is what I want. Just check one more time. All I could see is the monitor and then she's checking, doing the ultrasound. And I'm just watching my husband and his facial expressions. And then the doctor's like, oh, what is this? So my eyes are still focused on my husband. His eyes, they were big as watermelons and tears were just running down his face and I'm like, what's going on? And then next minute tears running down my face because I cannot see and not knowing what was going on. You know, after three children, mm. a man can determine what's going on on that screen. Then there was this flicker, this white light flicker and the doctor began to zero in on that flicker. <laughs> mm. And she said, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. There's a baby in here. This baby <laughs> is alive. Oh my goodness, this is the heartbeat. I'm like, what are you saying? <laughs> I just felt so excited and I could not let it hold it back any longer and I was thanking Jesus. I said, like, thank you Lord. She goes, I don't know how this is possible. <laughs> this is what my doctor told me. I don't know how this is possible. And I told her, well, you know what? I know how this is possible and that's only through our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. God really is faithful. Mm. I mean, God showed up for us at the time when People say he was dead. Mm -hmm. God was faithful. In an environment like Nanaquili where there is a, an epidemic of hopelessness and soon another epidemic of homelessness, God is faithful. I believe that as God transformed our lives and our family to this miraculous birth, God can give birth to new things in our community. As God pours out His Spirit in these islands, His promise is for a future and a hope for our children and our children's children. In October of 2006, Angela Kila gave birth to their miracle baby. The Nanakuli pastors joyously welcomed the baby into the community as a symbol of God's miraculous power and hope. Pour out your spirit. We know that this is, we haven't seen anything yet. After a time of prayer, Victor and Angela shared about how God's glory continued to be poured out even through the difficult birth. Aloha everyone. Thank you for your prayers. We would like to introduce to all of you, uh, my wife and I, Angela, our miracle baby. His name is Judah Allen Kuheleloa Kila. He was born on October 4th. He was a miracle child and he experienced a miracle birth. When he was born, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck twice. Um, at my wife's contraction, she pushed the doctor extracted him. Um, when he came through, his head and face was blue. He was lifeless. I was looking on while he was being born. They cut the umbilical cord and they sucked tissues out of his mouth and Judas screamed. And, and we were rejoicing. And we were rejoicing because <laughs> Judah means the praise of God. So God had really um, been there for us. And we just love God for giving us this precious son. 
we now have two boys and two girls and our family is complete. It's just proof of what how powerful that God is and that when we can put everything in his hands, he'll take control from there. So I thank you for your prayers and I thank the Lord for bringing Judith into this world safely and may God continue to bless you folks. Amen. Amen.